Hello, Internet. Doug Redmond here. And this video is going to show you uh, basically how to log in with the Vault 2014 API. So in Vault 2014, we added a new way to log in. Now, the old way still works, but the new way's got some new features in it we hope you're going to like. So I'm going to take you through that real quick. So what I thought I'd do is I just... Um, I'm going to write a, a very simple exe, um, and all it will do is just list out the top-level folders. Again, just to kind of show you the basics of, of how to log in and how to start um, making calls to the Vault server. So let's start up Visual Studio. make a new project here. Just do a simple Windows Forms application. So So how this application is going to work is the user is going to launch it. They're going to see a Vault login dialog, and then once they're logged in, I will just uh, print the folders inside of a list box here. So here's my list box. Now, to do the login dialog, I could either create a dialog myself and, and write all the logic myself, or I could use um, the one that comes with uh, the Vault 2014 SDK. So let's set up our references here. So there's uh, a lot of new DLLs here this year <clears throat> and um, I'm not gonna go through what all those mean right now I'm just gonna go ahead and select the things that are needed I'll, I'll have another video or article explaining what all of these things do Now to make web service calls, we need a reference uh, to Microsoft WSE, which is installed with your Vault client or server. And also need a reference to system web services. Okay, so let's uh, do the uh, the vault login. The uh, let's let's pop up that uh, that vault login dialog first. So that is in this assembly here, this Autodesk Data Management Client Framework Vault Forms, and. What I what I recommend doing so a lot of the new content we put in this auto these Autodesk data management um, assemblies <clears throat> they have very deep uh, namespace structures so what I recommend doing is uh, you can give these namespaces kind of an abbreviated name so I'm going to call this VDF so Autodesk data management client framework. That way I don't have to type all this out anymore. I can just do VDF dot and then uh, continue down there. So VDF dot. So I want to go into vault forms. 
And then library is kind of the common entry point to a lot of these new DLLs. So if I go into the library, I've got my login dialog. <clears throat> now it wants you to pass in a settings object. Um, for now I'm just going to do the default settings, so I'm just going to do null. And it's going to return this uh, this connection object, which is going to be kind of your your entry point into a lot of the vault functionality. And I'm also uh, because connection is used a lot, I'm also going to create another little uses statement up here just for that guy. So yeah, the connection object lives in this big guy right here, so now I don't have to type that out all the time. So connection. So what this line of code is going to do is going to pop up the dialog, the user is going to log in, and then if it's successful I get back this connection object, which will let me just go in and make calls into the vault server. So once I have that, I should pass that into my form. So I'm going to update my form here. If you've used Vault before in, in the older versions, you're probably used to the Web Service Manager. You probably have a lot of code that uses that. Um, that code will still work. The connection uh, object has within it a Web Service Manager, and you use that just like you've always been using it. So uh, the, way I like to, uh, the way I like to look at it is that the connection manages the manager. It's basically the vice president of the, uh, the Vault API here. So I've got my, my working connection, so now I can go to Vault and I can look up um, the folders. So you can go to Document Service and get folders by parent ID. Now in this case, the parent ID is going to be the root folder. Um, I could go to the document service and call a function that says give me the root folder, um, but there's uh, a another new thing we added is um, there's another way to get to that root folder. So if I go to the connection object, um, I can go to the folder manager, and there's this root folder here. This is a bit more optimized. Um, it, it will cache that data. If, if it's looked it up already, it will remember that, so you're not constantly looking up this root folder. Um, so I can get the ID that way, and that's my, my call to the web services. Oh, I should also do the return value. And that should do it. Let's uh, compile and run this thing. Oh, of course, some problems here compiling. Uh, one thing I keep forgetting is you want to move it off this client profile. Not sure why that's the default setting. Okay. Okay, it builds now. Let's run this. So here we go, it brings up the standard vault dialog. So it's got all the features I can uh, 
I can browse the vaults on a server. Uh, I can have it remember what I enter in here. I can switch between the uh, the normal account, the Windows account. So we log in and it lists our folders. So that's kind of the basics. Let me uh, let me just show you a couple more things here before I end the video. Let's go play around with this a bit. Um, first thing we need to update here um, is after this login dialog completes. Now, because this is UI, right, <clears throat> uh, you don't know what the user is going to do. They might not do what you expect them to do. Instead of logging in, they might have hit the cancel button or the close button. Uh, in that case, you're going to get back a null connection object, so let's just make sure we te uh, test for that. <clears throat> we'll just exit the program if they don't log in. Um, let's also play around with some of those uh, settings. <clears throat> so instead of passing in null, I'll pass in a uh, settings object. can go into the vault forum settings namespace and here are the login settings and let's play around with auto login mode this will uh, tell us the behavior for when um, that checkbox is checked that says remember this information we can kind of control how we want that to behave. So like, uh, for example, none means we're, we're going to ignore it. They always will have to type in their information. Um, restore means it's just it's going to restore the data, but they still have to hit the OK button. Um, but the setting I'm going to use is this restore and execute, where it'll load up any saved information, and it will just hit the OK button automatically. So the user doesn't have to do anything. It'll all just, they'll see the dialog for a brief moment, but it'll log them right in. Um, and I think that'll be the only setting I play with for today. Okay, let's run this and see how it acts now. So you see the login dialog. It was pretty much grayed out. It logged right in, and I've got my form. So, well, that's it for this video. It's just kind of a quick um, introduction to the login dialog and the connection object. So thanks for watching.